can we rewind that? <laughs> Just pretend I didn't say that last sentence. <laughs> I kind of like the idea or the challenge that the next Fisher cast out will be my last opportunity today. Mm. Paul, we've been out on the river today. Um, fairly challenging sort of conditions. Um, the kind of I, I viewed it today is that the sort of uh, scene that would meet a lot of people, and if they were looking to fish dry fly, they maybe rock up in the car park and give it best, um, yes. and leave leave you know <laughs> in a puff of smoke. But we didn't do that today, um, and we've had we've actually learnt quite a lot. I think and we managed to get a, you know a decent amount of it on film as well, which is great because we can analyse that afterwards. But what, what was your take home from today's session? Um, you've just stole my thunder, really. Um, <laughs> absolutely nailed it. In, mm. in difficult conditions. We we kind well, we to be fair, we thought it'd improve, but the the rain got heavier as the day went on, and consequently the water got colder. And you know more than anybody in terms of trout. Um, they they've got that. They can be quite moody and switch off. Not saying that happened. Period. But. Um, for me, I think what was when we were building towards a bit more of a hatch situation around that warmest part of the day. That's when the rain came in. And I know, kill it, it just probably breaks off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, uh, jo- John had a very, very sort of good observation that they felt like the barometer pressure had just crashed, and mm. I I noticed the the part where we were um, downstream um, after lunch. Yes, I. I I could see my breath, physically mm-hmm. see my breath, um, you know, which given we started in, okay, the river was high when we started, but we had rising fish and there was a, quite a lot of optimism at that, mm. at that stage. And I even said on camera, what, what, is, what is it they say? Don't work with children and animals and blah, <laughs> blah, blah. I think I remember saying something along the lines of likelihood it, that the spot will begin to get better from lunchtime onwards through the afternoon. Yes. And it pretty much went the other way. I'd argue that we had more consistent rising fish uh, this morning. Mm. Um, but just to touch on uh, your opening gambit there, yeah. Difficult conditions are... Uh, I do always try to be optimistic with my approach to fishing, whether it's mm. dry fly, which we we're doing today, but the other disciplines, whether it's nymphing or streamer fishing or um, wet fly, there are fish out there feeding, and it, it it's the challenge is it's up to us to find those fish and mm. go about tempting them really. Mm. And we had it, we had a bit of a script today. Well, I suppose in in many respects, if uh, if I can be candid, say I was um, just fishing for myself today, perhaps would have leaned towards nymphs, if, if I'm honest. I was going to say, I mean, we sort of, we're not sandbag, we, we kind of forced you to do like, okay, this is what you're faced with, and let's imagine you're tackling it with dry flies and then go. So that, yeah, I definitely appreciated that. But at the same time, if you were an angler that wanted to have dry fly sport, um for me, for me today, you could have gone two ways. You could have fished the water to features, like you're fishing, reading the water and sort of fishing likely spots with like a well sunk fly. Or you could sort of do what we did today, which was, I say we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you did today, which was to actively stalk and find it. Because, you know, a lot of people forget, you know, a rising fish is a feeding fish. And on a day like today, you know, only a small proportion of the total population of trout are going to be actually actively feeding. That, that is very true, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world to do when you've got those kind of coloured water cold conditions because any any rises you can find, it's, it's going to be a fish and it might be a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, to, I mean, we had some nice fish. I mean, good point you made there. Actually, I'll I just draw a reference to that. You said a rising fish is a feeding fish. I know that's an obvious statement, but fish don't rise to fresh air. So mm-hmm. the, the the rising, the feeding on something at the surface. So then up to us to try and uh, sort of piece together what's happening, that parts of that puzzle. Uh, we touched mm. on it, the likelihood, the, the bulk of what they were feeding on to their rice forms. And by elimination, you're not seeing duns drift over the fly, the fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could safely say that aphids would probably constitute the bulk of the diet for fish today. Though, as we both saw, and John as well, mm. um, 
fish nab the occasional done and things like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I think the fish that were active and looking, they pretty much, they would have most of the food that came over and they weren't being especially selective. I mean, the broad, broad ballpark sort of size. Um, yeah, yeah, I totally, totally. My slant on that, if if you want it, and be interested on your thoughts, is... No. I, <laughs> well, basically, okay, the, the, the river's out of condition, it's out of sorts, it, yeah. could, it could go either way, and it was arguably creeping up because of the heavy rain, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Um, I always think... And it's just a mindset I have on the front end of, of uh, a lifting water. Fish perhaps think, mm. my God, how, how long's this? Uh, how long's this flood go- going to last for? Is it two days? Is it several days? It's an unknown. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. do they feed hard for that given period, thinking mm, I might have to mm. shut down for several days? Yeah. I always find on the front end of rising water, you know. Um, Again, I, I was kind of led to believe from literature. I need to be careful what I say here, Paul, because we both put things in, You're among friends. in black and white. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there's no turning around from that one, I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, it, it's quite interesting that um, I was brought up um, sort of with this understanding that, oh, a, a river in flood, in full blown flood, yeah, arguably it's. It, it's it's not going to happen. Fisher perhaps you know um, hold up somewhere, but mm-hmm. that initial lift, if you like, I think excites fish. There's going to be some food washed in, yeah. and and they're going to feed hard, you know. And it needn't necessarily be a conscious. You're not saying oh the fish are reasoning this out, but the, the simple fact is is that the fish who missed those opportunities in previous generations wouldn't necessarily survive long enough to breed. So, you know, the fish that do do that, there's a propensity maybe to kind of lock onto that changeable, you know, maybe there's a bit of a storm front coming in, but it's not it's not terrible conditions yeah, yet. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, yeah maybe that op- taking that opportunity to pack on a bit of food because they don't know how long that high water is going to last. Absolutely, um, absolutely. It's not a crystal ball thing. I don't know about, I mean, just from my own experience, I've tended, tended to find that um, the trout will do more of a brinkmanship. They'll feed for a bit longer on that leading edge of that storm front, whereas the grayling, sh- they're a bit more conservative. Yeah, I, th- I think they're a little bit more sensitive grayling, yeah, yeah, to be yeah. fair, in, in that circumstances. I'd agree with you, totally. Mm. And, then, I, the, and then the far side of that as well, I, I tend to find that it takes them longer to, you know, they, they often wait for more of the colour to drop out before getting back on the feed again. So yeah, yeah. I think the trout sort of nip in at either end of that tail of that uh, yeah, yeah. distribution. But... Again, circumstantial. I don't know if there's anything to that. But. I think it's always nice, though, to have sort of theories, and that's what mm. keeps us going. You know, I mean, crikey, I mean, how rich, how rich would we be if we could make a trout talk? You know, <laughs> Doctor Doolittle. Get, yeah, get some, get some spotlights Jesus. on that. Could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine that? I don't. I'm, I'm now actually imagining that and sort of thinking would world that exclusive. Be, yeah, yeah, but yeah. well, but then would you sort of carry on? You know, would it actually be the, like, well, the maybe worst some thing of that magic's yeah, taken yeah, away? Yeah. And and it's nice to have theories and ideas and you know what. Abs- what and actually, is. on that, you've just reminded me. I thought you gave a good few years ago now, but it's it's exactly around that um, rising water and coloured water thing. Uh, and I don't <laughs> stop me if it's kind of like you know giving away trade secrets or whatever, but. Um, I remember you saying that when you tended to reach for a streamer, which a lot of people, if they, you know, they maybe see you as as a dry fly angler, that that might be the yeah. first sort of point of contact with your sort of material or whatever. But you said when you were um, using streamers, that you looked for that sort of situation where the bubbles, the the streamer bubbles, instead of having like a, a foam line, where it got more distributed across the yeah the yeah, channel. Yeah. And that was is that to do with like the ability of like bait fish to swim against the current uh, and losing that fight with the current a bit. Yeah, p- perhaps. Uh, just being more disorientated, if mm. you like. I, uh, I, I know you're a naturalist as, as well as me, as most fishermen are. We've got an interest in nature. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, for me, on my side, if you want to call it that, I'm sort of very observant. I'm always like scoping mm. around, scanning things, trying not to miss a trick. Yeah. I've always kind of been like that. I think it's that sort of hunter element, if you like. I'm always sort of inquisitive. I'm like a bloody schoolboy sometimes. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. what's that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Probing around. And I notice all these fish, and especially in flood conditions, can mm. kind of get shifted about. And uh, 
there's a lot of that. And there's a lot of things I, I feel. Mm. I might be speaking for myself here. Uh, hopefully I'm not. And um, certainly where I'm at with it all. And it ties in a bit about our previous conversation on getting a trout to talk. Uh, <laughs> that it kind of would snub it all out. But mm. there is that sense of um, not knowing but wanting to know. You've got that thirst for hunger. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. every day is a bit of a school day. Like I've learned things today. And just <laughs> chatting with you and John. And uh, just exchanging those ideas yeah. um, where you guys are. And you think, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we're on the we're, we're kind of on the same path there. Yeah, you know? and I think and one of the great things about fishing is that there's always more than one way to skin a cat as well. So you can you can take different routes and sort of end up either at you know a comparable destination or at the same sort of yeah. solution, yeah. but from a totally yeah. different angle, which I think is really nice. Um, it, again, just touching on that floodwater conditions um, and doing that thing, you know, we're quite keen at fishing discoveries on sort of cross pollination and trying to understand fishing more universally than just. It's great because it, it helps us with our specialism. So if you want to get really specialised on something, I think you can get fresh ideas from other areas of fishing where they've kind of specialised on something. And I know, for example, that you know when people figured out in pike fishing, in, in real heavy floodwaters, fishing back eddies with big jerk baits and sort of, you know, real sort of like huge, you know, prey, like really big mouthfuls, it's not a million miles away from, from throwing a streamer in... The, I mean, more you know, it'd have to be heavier flow than we had today, and but those, those kind of like conditions where it's a bit dicey, you know, you'd almost wouldn't want to necessarily go near enough the river to wet a line and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But dibbling about in back eddies with with bait fish imitations, you might catch the biggest trout you've ever seen out of that section. Yeah, quite river. probable, quite <laughs> probable. Yeah, yeah. So what what sort of stuff when you go out and you kind of what gets you excited about a day's fishing? Today, you know where you're at now. Today, in your career. well, no, no, it, it, like now in, in in this time of life. Um, um, well, I I like my dry fly fishing. I need to set the record straight there. I don't mm. want to sound like I've got my head up my backside and saying it's superior <laughs> to any other method. It isn't, as mm. as we discussed earlier, uh, the three of us. Mm. You know, you could argue uh, dry fly is two dimensional and nymph fishing is three dimensional. I think nymph fishing's a lot more difficult discipline than dry fly fishing. I think with both of them, you could, there are layers to it, and people that are excellent at either are, are yeah. going to be pretty, yeah, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I'd, I like my dry fly, and uh, the reasons I like it, um, one of my first loves is sight fishing, and I, mm. hopefully that enthusiasm showed through today. They, 100%, they, yeah. but, I mean, well, in terms of the river was out of sorts, not affording us good sight fishing, but there was mm. there was a um, an instant towards the end of the day where... The light, it wasn't perfect, but we were physically able to spot fish. Yeah. And that, that I, I just love that. Not not because it, it it's a shortcut to the downfall of the fish. It's about mm. observation, seeing mm. how the fish, in, how you, well, how it reacts to your fly and that kind of interaction between fish and angler. And you can learn so much from that, even if you don't catch that particular fish. It, it, it gives you um, sort of perspective on, what fish will tolerate, how far they'll move, how far the fish is physically moving to to eat prey items, yeah, et cetera, et yeah. cetera. I mean, there was one or two fish. I think I said on the commentary, I can't, I can't really remember because you know when you're doing yeah, that yeah, yourself, yeah. Paul, you try to second guess <laughs> and think ahead. But, I, you know, I could see, say that was the level, I could yeah. see fish lifting to look at things. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, that's a big part of my fishing, just... Just that observation sort well, of... Uh... Something that I took from today that um, it really sort of um, put... It, it not justified, but it actually... Um, it put the seal of approval on your style and approach of fishing because when I was on that high bank looking down and I managed to spot a couple of fish that you then fished up to, I could see how much, there was a pair of fish, but I could see them, how far they were moving in between rises. So you'd see it eat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it wouldn't necessarily be that. It would only, only be in that patch of, of water for maybe 30% of the time. The rest of the time it was nosing up under the branches and then it was looping back round. But this is all pieced together in a bit of a patchwork quilt because it would dis it would because of the colour of the water, if it sank down more than about eight inches, I couldn't you see couldn't it. You couldn't see it, yeah. But it would keep showing up in the same spots. And after, after we'd been there for about half an hour, 
I kind of got a, a rough idea of, of you the, plotted its sort of path. Yeah, and yeah. Where it liked to drift up to the surface yeah. and things like that. But what was great about um, watching your approach was that um, I could see it doing that, but you'd clocked it. And you had the patience to not deliver the fly just to that patch of yeah. water. You'd given it that sort of almost on the cadence, the rhythm of that rise. You'd, you'd sort of come up and seen it feeding, mm. but you delivered the cast in the in a in a short enough time period that it was going to be still in that patch of water, yeah. and you got the fish. And I think a lot of people would have thraped that water and think, "Oh, I should refuse the fly." It's not. It's ten foot away. It's yeah, even see. Yeah, the it's fly. A, yeah, it's you. You know where in the ballpark. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, so that's that kind of, it's kind of you to say that. It's a good observation. I wasn't in the sort of privileged view that you were up high. No, I, I, and, I, I, uh, I was thinking... Seeing what I could see. No, I, th I think, yeah, g going back to the dry fly thing, my preference is that the reason is what excites me. I love seeing the snout. And I, I to me, it's a sort of pinnacle of where it's at. And people might disagree, but what beats seeing a, a, a rise you know, and then try to identify on what perhaps this yeah. fish is feeding on, selecting an imitation, then presenting that, and then seeing the fish come up to take take your fly. I mean mm -hmm. that that you know that that's magic. That is for me. That is you know. It never really gets old, does it? It definitely it? doesn't. <laughs> you you'd never ever ever tire of that. And I think for me, um, early on in the session if it's the first one or two fish that I'm faced with, if I can see it coming up to the fly, I almost have to look away before I you know, want to pull it out of the fish's mouth. Sort of thing. I've got quite just, good at yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, having said that, today was a different... Um, we dropped a few fish today, and mm. I'm quite interested on uh, on on your um, sort of train of thought on that, and uh, quite like that idea, if only if it, it because it defends me. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, I do, I do like that idea. I, I've never given that any thought, and mm. this is where I, I learn as well because you, you, um, you're coming from it, and and to a degree, John as well, with mm. with your backgrounds in research mm. from quite a different angle. I, I see it through, a, 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 for want of a better term, a trout hunter's eyes, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that that's all I know, kind of thing. But it's nice to pull that information. Uh, uh, you know, I, I genuinely enjoy that and getting different thought mm -hmm. processes on it and it betters you and um, gives you more understanding going forward as well yeah, i think yeah. you know and i think i mean there's for me there's a couple of things going to say one was the, the color in the water I and mean, then we chatted a bit on you know on the bank about how they're possibly seeing the fly quite late and it's a bit yeah bit, you know yeah. they've not got yeah. as much chance to kind of you know intercept that because they're moving, it doesn't matter if the fly is in two dimensions, they're moving in three dimensions trying to intercept. Absolutely. Them, it's not, Absolutely. not an easy thing, particularly when the water is not only coloured, but it is getting more coloured. So it's not, it's a moving set of goalposts for the fish as well. So I, th know, I think to back that up as well, that last situation, because, and I, again, I, I uh, sick of repeating myself, I uh, think we got it on camera by, mm. by way of saying, yeah, the, I, I could physically see the fish. Yeah. The, the fly's coming right over its head. Yeah. And I'd swear the fish hadn't seen it. And mm -hmm. again, to back that up, two or three casts later, it came to that fly, yeah. you yeah. know. And what I, again, from my vantage point, what I was interested in, the number of times it actually turned and ate downstream of its position. Yes, yeah. Of that, the, that, of the that natural that, flies as well. Yeah, that was notable today. And mm. s same with, same with um, my, my fishing with the artificial, if you like, is yeah. the, the number of downstream eats. I had a couple of fish, like, fly went over it, and mm. you, you're almost on point bracing yourself, thinking, here we go, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Passes over, oh, relax, no. And then suddenly it turns <laughs> yeah. and comes and eats, you know. So, I mean, I suspect that one or two of the fish that came adrift today might as well have been because of that, in sort of taking very late yeah. in the drift, a bit more slack line, yeah, maybe yeah. even facing you at the time. And yeah, so well, it's one of them. It's one of them sort of unknowns, and and I think that's why. Well, I don't think I know it's why we we still endeavour to go fishing because yeah. there, there's no set. It, it's it's just an unknown each time we go out. No, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, which I enjoy. Mm. But it was yeah. And again, just I learned tons from being able to have that third person perspective, which I think. A lot of anglers don't necessarily give themselves the time to do that. They they want to sort of you know get right at it. And there's two things to that. One is that you know with your approach, even when you're on your own, you're very happy to actually sit and watch what's going on. 
And for me, uh, I'm always surprised at how subtly a large trout can rise Oof, and not yeah. really move the water. Yeah. And and I know for a fact that nine nine anglers out of ten wouldn't have seen that. So they don't even know that they've spooked the fish because they yeah, don't. And absolutely. And, and it's a viable yeah. fish as well yeah. that's actually yeah. feeding. And what and so we tried a little bit today to get some of those rice rice forms on on film and on video. Yeah. To, and I know they get even more subtle than that. So hopefully as we go forward, we'll build up a bit more of a library of, of that yeah. sort of thing. But the, the one thing I did want to touch on just before we wrap up was um, you mentioned quite an interesting thing, which you can see at, even if you're not, you know, 20 foot above the water like I was at the end of the day, um, what you can see at the angler's eye level in terms of when a fish is lying shallow, the sorts, you know, the way that it would actually appear the, the to The rise, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought yeah. that was, you know, something that a lot of people, they'd just see a fish rise, so a fish came to the surface and a yeah, fish, yeah. but they wouldn't think yeah. about how deep it was or whatever else, how much lead they'd need to give it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty big on that. But, um, each, again, I think that it, there's no conscious, I, I think that's just evolved and you kind of get used to it. And I think... Um, Again, fishing in clear water situation, I've been very fortunate to spend mm. quite a lot, a number of years in New Zealand, Slovenia, Bosnia, clear water, just yeah. like really the Y should have been today. But yes. We've yeah. been robbed. Um, <laughs> it's more like a Come and fish the Y pole, it's nice and clear pole. This <laughs> come on, we'll sort you. Carrot dangling in front of me, you know. Um, but no, being serious, um, mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of stalling here, I'm, uh, fertling around for words. I, I just have this, um, I think it's just because I spent so much time by by the water, I can, I'm mm. very relaxed about it. There's no hurry. Yeah. I have this, you know, I'm happy to sit back. And I get just as much buzz these days watching fish. And you, mm. again, you can learn so much. And you, funny you should mention the rice forms because that's one thing I, I'm really keen on reading. And again, we touched on mm. it, how far a fish is pre prepared to move, traverse across the current to eat. You know, sometimes yeah, yeah. they lurch forward, sometimes they drop back. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it, fish. Um, we touched on it today. That you've got the water level there, and the fish is here. Flow's mm. coming this way. It just tilts up, and then you know you see that that nice wag of the tail. Yeah. And yeah. that suggests he's he's comfortable. He's high up in the water. Mm. You know, and it's not one of them. Obviously, when we've got a fast current, the fish presents its underside. It's being pushed downstream all the while. You see the hurried rise. Yeah. Because it, all it's interested in is interception straight back to the safety of, of its feeding line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything, if it loiters there, oh, this is a nice insect I've just eaten. It's just being pushed further away from its lie and then therefore expending more energy getting back to where it wants yeah. to be. Yeah, absolutely. So, you and know... That's, when, that's where I start geeking out on the calories in, calories out, yeah, economic well, yeah, decisions yeah, well, yeah, and blah, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Well, you're, <laughs> you're an academic, aren't you? you? You like crunching figures. Um, <laughs> Some people have used more unkind words than that. But on a serious note, that, that idea of flying hours and being a practitioner, not just talking a good fight, I think that's one of the most important things. You've got to log the hours on stream. Yes, it's interesting to have those ideas, and I think you generate more ideas by being on stream, but you've you've got to put the hours in and the practice, and, and you know there's a certain minimum amount of time that you just can't shortcut. I think if you want to be a rounded angler, for want of mm. a better term, you, you've got to serve an apprenticeship. You've got to yeah, put yeah. them hours in. And it's it's not just hard hours in terms of, well, hard. It's not hard catching fish. It's not hours catching fish and aren't I good because I've caught 20. Mm. It's hard hours of observation, failure, you know, mm. blanking, things like this. All, all those things, you've got to take positives i know it sounds like a cliche and i i can come away with my head down we have I, cliches like the play yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can come away with my head down oh, i've been robbed today but mm. then you look back you, you 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 sort of reflect on your day and you think hang about uh, this situation happened i can take that to the table ne next time i go fishing or what yeah, yeah you yeah. know things like that there's a couple of fish there that really excite me i look we we took up a, a couple like Hardly any distance. I just yeah. love that sort of really close interaction. That, yeah, yeah. That really gets me buzzing. It's interesting because you know? when I was chatting to Howard Croston as one of these sort of chats that we do, um, he's I've sort of asked him about you know what do you 
really gets you going. And, it, and his choice was, although it was nymphing, um, it was more specifically, it was sight nymphing. So that it, it is that it, in similar way when you see the fish come to, you know, to rise and take mm. flight off the surface. It's like seeing that fish on station, sight fishing to it, and then seeing the sign of that fish having taken your artificial and stuff. Yeah. And I think yeah. there's a lot of that hunting DNA within that. And that's quite different from a lot of, you know, some of the different styles of fishing, which is, um, I don't know, less less like that stalking aspect. Yeah, um, I suppose. I've never analysed it like that, Paul. Um, I'm not going to disagree with you. It's just what what I you know what I like yeah, and yeah, what, yeah. what I sort of uh, floats my boat kind of thing. But it's um, what's quite obvious when we're watching you fish is that you have got that patient almost deer stalking type approach where you'll sort of you know you'll make sure that you know first scare no fish you know make sure that that yeah, you're yeah. taking care of that and then you're actually singling out the fish that you want whereas there's people that cover more water throw more leather and and you know and that's effective as well but if you want to pick out a particular fish and if you're after that special fish you know you can either go for just catching as many as you can and go for weight and numbers and therefore one of them might be a big one or it's like yeah i've singled that one out and yeah that's the one that yeah. i'm going to take and that's it's a different game and i think it's great that that diversity that you know those opportunities and that range of absolutely exists you know it's fantastic absolutely you look at this morning how far how much water did we cover mm. because i'm spotting <laughs> fish and I, again we had this discussion stream side off camera but yeah I, I i look at a piece of water i'm sure you do i'm sure john does as well mm. and you map it out howard will as well i know how mm. it does i've had mm. discussions with howard about it and and you map it out and i can see fish and i think and, and I, I know it sounds sort of uh arguably terribly arrogant but you map it out you think that fish then i'll go for this one that one that doesn't necessarily mean i'm going to catch them all no just in your head that's a sequence you you want yeah, to go yeah, about yeah. your business yeah. kind of thing absolutely um, yeah. yeah you know and I, i'm i'm it's not greedy but i like the chat I, let me can can we rewind now <laughs> just pretend i didn't say that last sentence <laughs> i kind of like the idea or the challenge that the next fish I cast out will be my last opportunity today. Mm. And I think if you get that kind of mindset, it, it makes you focus that li little bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you think, and it could have been, the, the river could have come up like that, all, almost, Super you know. Super changeable today. So and there's every chance you've of got, it You've got to true. try and make every opportunity count, you mm. know. Mm. Um, put it on the scoreboard and, really put some effort in it. It's easy. I've done it in the past. You've yeah. got six or seven rising in front of you and you're like a school kid. And yeah, oh, it doesn't matter. I've bundled the cast on that one. Yeah. There's the seven more and then suddenly there's just one more and, uh, you, you know, you've fluffed a few chances. And that, that can happen. Absolutely. That, that can happen. But what I like about that is that if you do that over time, it means that when you've only got one chance, you've drilled the proper discipline True. hundreds of times. True. So you more chance you get that seven pound wild brownie rising in front of you. Yeah. And there's nothing you know, basically even if you fluff your cast you might spook another fish, which is going to be just as bad because it's going to spook the one that you're that, actually yeah, after. Yeah. So actually having hundreds and hundreds of repetitions of doing it in that disciplined fashion, it serves you a lot better for when it it, it does come. Yeah, I think so. It's just again it's it's never been a conscious sort of um decision if you want of mine to think no, no. oh that's how i want that's the end product that's where i'm going kind of morphed into it yeah it's, it's like the big fish the thing of the yeah. way that you prefer yeah. Fish, yeah yeah it's like the big fish thing it's mm. it was never a constant I, you know i caught my first big fish and i thought jesus christ <laughs> i'll have a bit more of this you yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah and how do i do this and yeah. then there it there it all begins you know and i'm still consumed with that and again i don't you know people oh, um sort of i i am I, I do like chasing big fish, but that that's I don't want that to sound like I'm better than anybody else. You know, it's a very it's a big uh, it's a very different um sort of proposition and big fish can be sometimes I don't even know if I want to say this on camera, <laughs> they can be bewilderingly easy to catch, you know, mm. if they're feeding really hard. Mm -hmm. I've had fish over five pound UK fish that are from you can't see the cameraman, John. Yeah. I kid you not, Paul, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. from here to John. Yeah, I kid you not. Mm, mm, mm. 
and you know you hook one of them bad boys at that under the rod tip. Oh, <laughs> but if they're feeding that hard, you as I said earlier, you guys have uh, put it far better than I can in terms of um, you know when they're really focused, the, uh, everything in the per- peripheral. You can always prod them with the rod tip. You have to prod them with the rod tip. Do feel like that. Yeah, it yeah. does feel like that. You can get so close to them. Mm. It's quite rare, obviously, but <laughs> it <laughs> depends, is depends yeah. on what rivers you fish, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so tomorrow the, we've half a chance of getting some clear water conditions. So I'm looking forward to we're on a different venue tomorrow. Yeah. Um. So there's every chance we'll get a completely different set of like lessons and findings and whatever else. So yeah. I'm, yeah. And it's, it's not a river you fished before, is it? I'm look, very much looking forward to tomorrow, yeah. Mm. I, I, I am a bit of a river collector, <laughs> closet river collector. I do. Well, you know. we do actually shout out to um, Chris Pepp and Lynn for hosting us today. Um, that's been, it's a, it's a fabulous, fabulous piece of limestone river in the UK. So that's been absolutely great. Yeah, yeah, thanks. It, we, it was fantastic. Absolutely. Great, great piece of water they've got that's it i'm very envious of you guys living <laughs> down here <laughs> oh well you know do you know what i mean I'll, I'll take sort of sections of the eden from time to time as well if you want a bit of an exchange program i think we could I think we can arrange that, after that. Yeah. <laughs> so lathkill tomorrow and we'll see what that brings um but for now i think uh, we might as well wrap it up and yeah okay take our leave yeah. and finish that beer <laughs> yeah thanks thanks paul cheers mate yeah nice one yeah cheers thanks <laughs> cheers, john cheers. as well <laughs>